Then the paper first came out, the first criticism it received was that it doesn't actually tell you how to hack a simulation. And I told them that's usually the first paper on a topic is not also the last one. Thank you so much for coming to my talk. It's wonderful to see almost standing room only audience. Always a pleasure. Shall I assume that you hate your lives and want to escape? <laughs> that's why we're here. Excellent. Uh, if you want to learn more about my work, and 30 minutes is not enough to tell you about decades of wonderful research, you can follow me. You can follow me on Facebook, you can follow me on Twitter, just don't follow me home. It's a very, very important part of it. So this talk, I'm giving it for the first time. I never spoken this before publicly. I published a paper a couple of years ago, which talks about how to hack the simulation. And it has some technical parts to it. I will simplify it completely. No technical details. I'll talk about two things in general. I'll talk about simulation and AI and how they work together. So that should give you enough information to escape. Keep in mind, I'm still here. So that should tell you something about success of this paper. Otherwise, no one cites it. So it's very important to leave some room for future work. Let's see. So what is a simulation theory? What is that hypothesis? It's probably became most famous after Nick Bostrom published his paper on the topic, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? But it's much older. Historically, if you think about Descartes, if you think about any religion, we're living in a made world. We are created agents. There is some sort of a intelligent designer thing. And this is a situation. And typically, to escape, you have to follow the rules set up by the designer. But I was interested to see if there is any other alternatives for that. What are the chances? What are the odds? If you listen to some philosophers, Nick Bostrom is one example, but there are others some think it's very likely, if not certain, that we are in a computer simulation. Most other people don't have such high probabilities for it, but we know from their behavior that they've given enough time to research, to publish a paper on it, to really invest in a simulation hypothesis, even if they are skeptical. So to me, it tells it's at least worth investing similar amount of time in trying to hack it. Just theoretically, if you spend years of your life researching it, you might as well see what you can do with this. So that's the situation. I personally think it's almost a certainty, and I'll later tell you about why. So retroactive placement. This is either the stupidest idea or the most brilliant one you'll ever hear. <laughs> One day, we're going to have technology to make virtual reality. Virtual reality is so good, you can't really tell if it's virtual or real. And we can modify your brain a little so you forget that you entered virtual reality. It's affordable, it's available. What I'm going to do, and I pre-commit to it right now, I will simulate this exact moment billions of times, retroactively placing you into a computer simulation. Are you real? Or you just one of the simulations attending the stock. You want to know the difference, right? It simulates your brain, your consciousness states, everything about this moment, including previous history of you getting to this festival and so on. This should greatly increase your probability of being in a simulation. In fact, if I run even more simulations, I can get you to 100 asymptotically. But for some reason, you decided to escape. I don't know your personal situation, maybe your life sucks, but I'm interested in knowing the real answers. Everything in the simulation, any experiment, gives you information about the simulation. We don't know what's happening outside. What are the real computational resources? What are the answers to big philosophical questions? Purpose of simulation, who created it? Anything else philosophical? If we want uh, to achieve true immortality, not just limited to the physical, age of the universe, if we are interested in getting superpowers, magical powers, that's where getting access to outside information would be helpful. This is not a completely novel idea. A couple years ago, there was a lot of media publicity about some billionaires hiring scientists to hack us out of a universe, hack us out of a simulation. I was not one of the scientists hired, and we still don't really know who the billionaires are. I researched as much as I can, and all these articles kind of cite each other in a circular manner, and there is no report or anything. So that's another mystery. I haven't seen any billionaires disappear so far. 
at least not the cool ones. What this paper is not about. I do research on consciousness, superintelligence, uh, simulation, and quantum physics. So I get all the crazy people emailing me from every conceivable combination. I do not do research on drugs and psychedelic dreams and hypnosis. None of those things is what the paper is about. I'm interested in it from a computer science point of view. If we have a computer simulation, what are the different ways we can actually hack it, obtain resources from outside the simulation or get some bonus privileges within the simulation. So what does it even mean to escape? In the paper, I have a classification where we talk about maybe you know that you are in a simulation is the first step, then maybe you are able to get some information in and out, so you communicate with outside. The ultimate escape is to take your mind, your brain, your consciousness outside and upload it into a different avatar in the external universe. Of course, we know nothing about external universe, so I was interested in examples of doing that in our universe. There are two examples in the paper. One is where a fish is given a little aquarium car and it drives it around in our world, controlling it. It's super cute. The other example is where a brain scan of a worm kind of comb of all of its neurons is taken and uploaded into a logo robot and it drives around. So that's the best I found so far as examples of what we hope to achieve. Maybe we can get to much more humanoid robots in the external world, but so far I don't have much data on that specifically. What are the examples of actually being able to hack a universe, a virtual universe, a program? There are two types. The escape where you have assistance from external world, that's easy. Somebody gets you out, they're nice to you. The hard one is doing it from the inside. And we actually have examples where people manage to hack virtual worlds like Mario World from inside. Manipulating the game characters in a normal manner, doing certain things, and those actions mapping onto memory states of a processor, allowing them to either load new code or get access to the operating system. Pretty cool. How does it actually look? On the left, I have the actual directions you would have to follow, and there is a lot more, I simplified it, to hack the Mario world. So it's all about you take a turtle, you turn around, you place it here, you jump two pixels to the left. It's a whole dance you have to do. And if you are doing the right moves, but you're in the, right, uh, in the wrong spot, you're like a pixel off, it's not going to work. The magic spell will not work. On the right, I have an actual magical spell from one of the religious books. It's amazing how similar the two are. We're just doing it at the wrong pixel. That's the problem. But if you can figure out the sequence, you can get magical privileges in the Mario game. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.